sometimes people ask me if it bothers me if uh, if my name's not first, but it kind of makes sense and it sounds a little bit better to me, Meg and Dia, than Dee and Meg. Honestly, uh, Meg wanted to name our band the, the Mighty Cockroaches or something like that. I would do anything anybody wanted, not anything, if we were called the Magnificent Cockroaches. I would learn to play my guitar over my head. There's never been any animosity towards my name being first. You know, it'd be, uh, it'd be pretty cool. I bet we'd, uh, do a lot better, sell a lot more records that way. I really want us to be called the Skeksis because if you've seen that Jim Henson movie, The Dark Crystal, like those old like bird That's really creepy cool. people. I told you this before, but like the bird creepy, the bird, the bird creepies. creepies, the bird creepies. No, <laughs> like the bird creepies. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? like, no, the Skeksis, and they're so cool, and I just love that name. So I really wanted us to be called. The Wait, Skeksis. were you trying to say the creepy birds? <laughs> but you said the bird creepy. But actually, I thought it'd be so fun if we called one of our records and we called like Nick, Jonathan, Carlos Skeksis. So it was like Megan Dia and the Skeksis. Like, Bob Marley. They'd be real down with that to be called creepy birds. <laughs> I've been in the band for almost two years and I think it's time to change the name to Meg and Dia and Carlo. Or maybe Meg and Carlo? Dia and Carlo? Carla. It was a Mega D Associates, How's Life on the Road? The Yellow Butterfly song is pretty bad. Beep! But a little on the lazy side. I work at Walmart now and I saw your CD and totally sold it to some little 12 year old girl saying that you write songs for Hannah Montana. How did that rumor get started? That's interesting. No, you should totally do that. I now. should. I love her single. I, I wish you guys I would have a good one. It was an interesting experience. We've never done anything like that before. Your flies have done this. You get that on camera? Oh. Yes! I remember there was four days in that period where I just drank a lot of coffee and had a lot of caffeine and basically didn't sleep just getting these songs ready to present to our label and our producer and during those four days is when I was the most creative so I learned that uh, I work very well under pressure and I don't like that fact about me at all I wish I could work just you know lounging about but apparently that's not not how, uh, how I like to write. I tried to take off some of the stress from her and put it on me, and uh, I wrote a couple of songs. I actually like Hug Me Till You Drug Me, honey. Hug Me Till You Drug Me, honey. That's what it's called. What's it about? Brave New World. Yeah, but what about it? But they're orgy porgies. What's an orgy porgy? It's what they call them when 12 people get together in a room with tables, drug themselves, and have orgies together because physical attraction in their brave new world is mostly for fun. Which it still is today, but not all the time. What else is physical attraction for? Love. What's that? I don't know, but we're gonna find it someday, <laughs> so shut up! I know that we've always been that band that likes to be all literary and it, we, we don't talk about books because we think that we know everything or we're super intellectual. It's just that 
we we love to read and we love authors and we have these authors that we look up to and when we're done reading a book like, like that's like that's the moment when we feel like the most inspired and the most like artistic. The songs about also like how if you're like programmed or raised a certain way then that's how you turn out to be and it's not really thinking for yourself. Which I thought about it and that's not always like a bad thing because at first like when I was writing the song I was like oh it's so bad it could also be like a good thing as well because there's lots of things I was pre-programmed to do that like I think are good. I'm so deep. I think our whole band, like as close as we are, we got a lot closer um, staying there. The guys actually stayed in the room across from us. Hey, this is Carlo. Hi. Come on in. This is Jonathan and Nick's room, and this is Nick's bed. As Jonathan's bed, Jonathan has. This is Godzilla. You guys know who Godzilla is. He does this. Yeah. This is the living room where we watch movies. We watch Dexter. We watch uh, wrestling. We watch sports. Let's go to the fridge. Let's listen to the fridge. Come on. So we got some Cristal and up in. Where's up? All the Cristal, dude. I drank it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's go to my room. Come on. I'm pretty lucky because I get to stay in this room by myself. And this is my stuffed animal. This is a kiddo. Yeah. I brought over Pac-Man. This is a little Atari thing you hook up to the TV. Xbox and PS3 has got nothing on this. And we'd stay up all night just playing while Jonathan cooked. Some of our fans actually know about my Pac-Man skills because I don't remember what venue we were playing but there was a like the tabletop Miss Pac-Man and I started playing it with some of our online fans and they were like holy shit you don't have a life you play Pac-Man all the time because that's the only way that they could explain me being so good at it. <laughs> One day at an organic supermarket, uh, we went on a little band adventure. Yo, we're just doing groceries. While we were there, this lady that was working there, uh, I asked her, you know, what kind of tea I should get or what she recommended. Well, let's take a look. If you're into jasmine, jasmine, green tea. Jasmine green. Actually, the jasmine green, it's productivity and really good sex. It's what? For writing, creativity, and really good sex. Really good sex? Oh, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Wait. But you have to put honey in it. What about oh, I have honey? Jonathan comes over and He's just like, hey, do you guys want to come to dinner over at our place? I have the pasta boiling on the back of the stove. There's asparagus, tomatoes, olive oil, crushed red pepper, garlic. It's going to be good. Carlo made ramen noodles every day. So every once in a while, I'd have to step up, make some pasta. Did you think about what I said last night, knowing you? You probably didn't. I could picture your face on the other side, completely oblivious. The pasta was this crazy like bow tie, like cheese and vinegar and I don't even know what he put in there, but it was amazing and we had the best meal and I thought my sister was a good cook. But Jonathan is an amazing cook. Bless the food, bless the meat. I'm hungry, so let's eat. I need two yeah. chairs, okay? Yeah. Carlo has no taste buds because he <laughs> burned them off somehow. And so he puts extra, extra spices and pepper on everything. In fact, he takes butter and he puts pepper all over butter and eats it with a knife. What is wrong with pepper and butter? Because of a little zest. I hate running, 
more than anything in the world, but I think I hate gaining weight a little bit more, just a little. So uh, I torture myself every day for about an hour. Peace. I'll be back.